The final piece of the Burj Khalifa is getting erected today. A steel spire, the lightning rod of Dubai. With the help of three strand jacks, Mr. David Bradford and his team are lifting the spire. Remember, the center of gravity of the spire is much higher than the pickup points. Now, please connect this scene with your daily life experience. Can you spot a major issue in the spire lifting now? Yes, you're right. This lift is doomed to end in disaster. To prevent this, the engineers used roller guides to maintain the lateral stability of the spire. After a long, eight-stage lifting operation, the spire reached its final position. The workers immediately bolted it into place. Looking down from the top of the spire, you might notice an intriguing pedal pattern in the design of Burj Khalifa. But what's its purpose? Let's increase the number of pedals. Can you see a recognizable shape forming from the edges of this modified building? The topmost portion forms a spiral. This new design of the Burj Khalifa has no spiraling pedals at its top. In this simple design case, strong winds would have caused the building to oscillate violently. You may have observed this before. Fluid flow around an object creates a phenomenon called vortex shedding. This process generates fluctuating forces that can cause a building to oscillate. This is why engineers add a spiral to the top of tall structures, to break these vortices. In the case of Burj Khalifa, the building's own shape serves as a spiral. A smart solution from the design engineer Bill Baker, he confused the wind. This is the structural anatomy of Burj Khalifa, a central core supported by multiple buttresses. The central core is the backbone of the building, made of high-grade concrete up to 156 floors. Burj Khalifa surpassed other buildings in height due to this clever design. The glass cladding merely covers this reinforced skeleton. This is a type of design called curtain wall design. In theory, everything sounds great, but how was such a structure actually built? Even experienced engineers would be challenged by the task of pumping concrete to such heights. Concreting the lower floors was straightforward. Burj Khalifa's construction manager, Mr. David Bradford, knew that their existing concrete pumping technology wouldn't work beyond the 80th floor. The solution? Develop a new concrete pumping system, one powerful enough to set a world record for the highest vertical concrete pumping, 606 meters. A team of engineers from Putzmeister, Samsung, BASF, and Unimix meticulously planned for this day. The true hero behind this record-breaking 606-meter concrete pumping feat was a high-performance concrete pump developed by Putzmeister. Moreover, the engineers developed a special concrete mix for Burj Khalifa, one capable of being pumped to 600 meters without segregating. This mix, developed by BASF, contained an admixture called Glenium Sky 504. This concrete remained workable for three hours before hardening, giving workers enough time for mixing, pumping, and placing. This powerful pump produces an outlet pressure of 200 bar, nearly 200 times atmospheric pressure. The most crucial part of this concrete pumping system is the S-tube valve. The left piston pumps the concrete through the valve, while the right piston simultaneously draws in new concrete from the hopper. Just before the right piston pumps, the S-tube valve flips its position. Pretty cool, right? This high-pressure concrete then begins its journey through these pipes. Believe it or not, after starting the concrete pump, it took almost 35 minutes for the concrete to travel up to this height. Finally, the concrete reaches the boom. The boom of the concrete pump can extend as shown. The hydraulically controlled boom is able to reach any point on the floor thanks to its agility. On the record-breaking day, the team used three such pumps to achieve the highest vertical concrete pumping. To counteract Dubai's high temperatures, which could affect concrete workability, they pumped the concrete at night. To further maintain workability, they even added ice cubes to the concrete mix. In fact, the team had tested the new Putzmeister pump in a horizontal configuration before the main pumping process. Concrete pumping was just one of many construction innovations used in the Burj Khalifa project. The hexagonal core, combined with buttresses, minimizes bending even during severe storms. An interesting fact, 
This hexagonal core also houses Burj Khalifa's massive elevator system. This was a genius design decision by Bill Baker. Since sunlight cannot penetrate the building's center, why not use that space for elevators? Thanks to Baker's petal-shaped design, sunlight reaches all living spaces in the tower. In construction footage of Burj Khalifa, you may have noticed a distinctive yellow material moving upward. This is jump form construction technology. To understand this super fast concreting technology, we 3D printed all its components in detail using a Bamboo Lab A1C printer. The entire 3D printing process for the jump form technology took over 45 hours. Our previous printer would have taken more than 90 hours for this task. One of the standout features of this machine is its ability to handle power failures seamlessly. The printing resumes automatically once the power is restored, without any glitches or visible discontinuity marks. Additionally, this compact and budget-friendly printer from Bamboo Lab allows for remote monitoring and control via a mobile app. Its exceptional precision played a crucial role in ensuring the accuracy and seamless assembly of the jump form technology. Jump form technology starts with a hardened concrete which was made with the help of a normal formwork. Engineers first install the jump form system around it. This system consists of three key components, formwork, tracks, and a hydraulic system. The assembled formwork must create joints that are almost void free to ensure a smooth structure. Two separate hydraulic systems play crucial roles in this process. The first system is responsible for detaching and reattaching the formwork, while the second system lifts the forms to the next level. To lift the forms to the next level, the hydraulic system has to use a tricky lock-unlock technique. Now you may start the first concrete pouring. Wait for the concrete to harden. Now it's time to activate the first hydraulic system allowing the forms to separate from the hardened concrete. Notice that the forms must have a smooth inner surface. Next, engineers activate the second set of hydraulic pistons, enabling the forms to climb along the tracks. Upon reaching the next level, the forms retract inward, creating a sealed mold for the next concrete pour. Now, the engineers have to wait for the concrete to get hardened. Once the concrete has set, the tracks are extended and the formwork begins its climb again. This cycle is repeated until the final concrete height is reached. After a few cycles, engineers can even reuse previous tracks, optimizing material efficiency. The jump form technology significantly reduced labor requirements during the construction of the Burj Khalifa, saving thousands of work hours. This illustration showcases the entire concrete structure of the Burj Khalifa. In addition to the central core and buttresses, you can also observe the cross walls and columns. The architects ingeniously designed living spaces within these pockets, ensuring that all residents have access to natural sunlight. Notably, the engineers did not construct the buttress wall as a single piece. Instead, they designed it as two separate buttress walls with a gap in between. This gap served as a corridor leading to the living areas after exiting the elevator. Ingenious, isn't it? Tower cranes also played a crucial role in transporting materials, from rebars to glass panels, to the required heights. These cranes grew along with Burj Khalifa thanks to their self-raising mechanism. We hope from this animation you may get a clear idea about how these cranes increase their heights. The concreting process is going smoothly, and the building is rising quickly. However, to the dismay of David Bradford, they're unable to do any internal work. The reason? The missing glass cladding. Without exterior covering, engineers cannot perform internal tasks. The wind is strong, and the temperature is high. The company responsible for delivering the glass cladding failed to meet its deadline. Despite the delay, the management secured a new contract and the prefabricated glass cladding was finally assembled. This glass 
coated with a special layer of titanium, blocked the wind and drastically reduced the building's internal temperature. The assembly process for the glass panels was fascinating to watch. Most of the glass panels used in Burj Khalifa measure 1.4 meters by 3.3 meters. Their only structural support comes from these brackets. The remaining connections rely solely on interlocking. Here's how it works. The sides of each panel interlock with its neighbor. You may also notice a similar male-female interlocking mechanism at the bottom of each panel. Additionally, the glass panel secures itself to the bracket. As the glass panel installation progressed, Burj Khalifa began to take on its glamorous final look. The spiral shape of the top petals further enhanced the building's beauty. Let's explore the importance of this spiral shape through an experiment. Here I am introducing a cylinder into a smooth flowing water. You can see after a few seconds the cylinder starts to oscillate. If you observe closely, you will get the reason. There are a lot of vortices after the cylinder and they are fluctuating. This is known as the water shedding. The fluctuating forces produced by the water shedding makes the cylinder oscillate. In the second case, I have attached some inclined fins to the cylinder. If you observe now, there are still vortices here, but they are not fluctuating. Unlike a magic, the oscillation dies. One crucial fact to remember is that when empty, Burj Khalifa weighs 500,000 tons. How does Dubai's weak soil support such an enormous structure? Dubai's soil is composed mainly of loose sand and weak sedimentary rock. Even after digging 140 meters deep, engineers could not find a strong, solid layer of bedrock. A conventional raft foundation for Burj Khalifa in this location would have been a disaster. Chief Engineer Bill Baker devised a simple yet effective solution, utilizing the frictional force of the surrounding soil. Here, Bill Baker demonstrates this concept by pushing a thin, sharp rod into the sand. You may notice that after a certain depth, the rod stops sinking. This happens because the frictional force between the sand particles increases with depth. To amplify this effect, Baker added multiple piles beneath the raft foundation. Each RCC pile extends to a depth equivalent to 10 floors of Burj Khalifa. The next major challenge was constructing these piles with absolute precision to bring the design to life. To begin, engineers drilled deep holes using an auger excavator. The blades of this device efficiently removed the soil. However, Mr. Bradford faced a serious issue, Dubai's high groundwater levels. The vibrations from heavy machinery risked causing the borehole walls to collapse, flooding them with salty groundwater. Bradford's ingenious solution? Introducing a drilling fluid. As the soil was excavated, engineers simultaneously pumped a specialized slurry through the auger's shaft. This dense slurry exerted hydrostatic pressure on the borehole walls, preventing collapse. Once the borehole was stabilized, workers inserted a temporary hollow steel casing to keep the soil intact for the concreting process. Next, they placed long, cylindrical steel reinforcement bars into the borehole. In standard concreting, workers use vibrators to ensure compactness. However, in such deep boreholes, using vibrators was impossible. Instead, they used a special self-compacting concrete that flowed like a liquid, eliminating air pockets on its own. The foundation alone took two years to complete. This sequence illustrates the entire foundation construction process for Burj Khalifa. Now, we have a solid foundation capable of supporting the world's tallest building on Dubai's loose soil. Without the spire, Burj Khalifa would look incomplete. In fact, without its steel spire, Burj Khalifa's height would have been only 685 meters. The erection of this 450-ton, 244-meter-long spire posed a major challenge for engineers. Their solution? Assemble the spire inside the building. To do this, engineers lifted 5-meter-long sections up to level 156 where the spire was carefully assembled and welded together. Now comes the biggest question, how to lift the fully assembled spire? There was no space at such a height to position cranes. Obviously, cranes can't be placed in heaven. The answer, strand jacks. 
Now, watch as the three strand jacks get to work. First, the strands were attached to three designated pickup points on the spire. Notice that these connection points are positioned well below the spire's center of gravity. As we saw at the beginning of the video, engineers used lateral guides supported by hydraulic jacks at three different levels of the building. Throughout the process, adjustments were made to the roller guides, and in eight lifting stages, the spire reached its destination. The spire acts as a vital communication hub. It also acts as the lightning rod of Dubai. Will the Jeddah Tower surpass Burj Khalifa's height? Only time will tell. I hope you enjoyed the practical demonstration of gem form concreting. This experimental rig was 3D printed using a bamboo lab printer. If you like to explore the big world of 3D printers, please check out their website. Take care. Bye-bye.